to start to renew our minds tonight, God. We need your anointing that destroys the yoke, gets rid of it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask in Jesus' name that you would magnify yourself in this place. We glorify God. Raise us up and help us to do better. Help us to get better. Help us to live better. In the name of Jesus, help us to pray better, God. Help us to obey you better, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we give your name the glory for us. In your name that we pray and we believe you all day. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody clap your hands. I thank God again for my husband, Pastor Samuel Sneed, amen, for being in the building on this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 5. Hallelujah. Is that all right? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 25. And you know this story. Amen. So we're going to breeze right on through it because we got some Bible scholars here tonight and some Sunday school goers in the building on tonight. So you know what the word of God is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe the theme this week is trust God's word. All right, all right. Come on, somebody. Trust God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. I'll begin reading at verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things. Somebody say many things. Of many physicians. Somebody say many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, and I believe she said within herself, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And this is where I want to go right here. Verse 29 declares, and straightway, somebody say, immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Somebody say, Lord, do it. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, trust God's word. Hallelujah. I begin to look at this word and I thank God, amen, for this word. And how many of you in the building know that God is able to give you a private touch in a public place? Come on, somebody. God is able to give you a private touch in a public place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible lets us know according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. There's another version that says we're afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. In every way, another version says we're troubled, but not crushed. We're frustrated, but not in despair. Here's another version that says in every way we're troubled, but we are crushed by our troubles. Uh, another version says we're frustrated but we don't give up. Hallelujah. Here's another version that says we are pressed on every side by troubles. Hallelujah. But we are not crushed. We are perplexed but not driven to despair. How many of you know that there are weapons that come at you from the north, the south, the east, and the west? And isn't it just like God to put us right smack dab in the middle of it? are thrown to stress you out. They're thrown at you. The darts are thrown at you to make you weary. Uh -huh. they're, they're, they're thrown at you in hopes that you will get tired and weary and that you will give up on what God has purposed in you to do. And in hopes the weapons are coming at you hoping that uh, you will give up the good fight of faith. Somebody look at your neighbor and say you will give up the good fight of faith. That's what the, the, the darts and the weapons and the fiery trials come for. And that, that the enemy sends your way hoping that you would give up. Hoping that you would throw in the towel because you know even the enemy knows that at some point I'm going to get her. 
her. He's sitting back waiting and watching to see how you're going to do under the weight and the pressure. Hallelujah. Right. Waiting for you to, to, to bow down and give in right. under the weight. Waiting for you, waiting for us to, uh, to allow, to succumb to the pressures and, and the issues of life. Look at your neighbor say, everybody's got issues. Yeah. We got issues getting up in the morning. We got issues when we go to bed at night. We got issues going out and we got issues coming in. We got issues on the job. We got issues in our home. We got issues of verbal abuse. We got issues of mental abuse. We got issues of secret pain. We got issues of disrespect and selfish agendas. Come on, somebody, look at your name and say issues. Everybody got issues. Everybody got issues. The enemy wants a believer to think that you're in it by yourself. But look at somebody and say the devil is alive. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 9, a version says we are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. Come on, so can I say that again? We are hunted down, but never, somebody say never, never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Look like every time I take two steps up, I get knocked three steps backwards, but I'm not staying down. I get knocked down, I get punched in the side, but I'm getting up again. Come on, somebody, if you really believe. The weapon, the weapon may form, but the Bible lets us know that it cannot succeed. The enemy comes and he tries to strip you of your confidence. He tries to strip you of your faith. He tries to strip you of your commitment. He tries and he tries again to strip you of your faithfulness, but he cannot win. He cannot win. God tells us to not get weary in well-doing. Come on, somebody. Put on the whole. I heard somebody read it before. Put on the whole armor of God, which includes your protection of faith. If you get knocked down, and guess what? Sometimes you will. You just get up with the truth. Come on, you just go forward in the power of he that is in you. Hallelujah. I'm trying to go there right now. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Right thoughts, pure motives, righteous agendas, which happens to be God's agenda. Hallelujah. We're going to look at this pitiful case of this woman. This woman with the issue she had, the Bible says, a constant issue. Anybody ever had your back up against the wall and it seems like you've been around and around the same circle for a long time? Anybody ever had a situation where it looked like, God, it don't, I don't think I'm going to get out of this okay? It's because if you don't do something about it, I don't know what's going to happen. I might just go straight rogue on somebody if you don't fix it right now, God. Hallelujah. But the Bible says she had a constant issue of blood upon her for 12. 12. Somebody say 12. That's a long time to go through an issue. Look at your neighbor say everybody's got issues. You sit there and act like you don't have your own personal issue. Everybody's got Issue. The Bible lets us know that she had a constant flow, constant issue that probably no doubt threw her into a weakness, caused her to be depleted of strength, caused her to be weak in faith. Come on, somebody. Every now and then, something comes at you. It means it looks like from out of nowhere. But what you got to know, believer, is that the enemy is waiting on you to quit being faithful. He's waiting on you to stop being committed. He's looking and walking about, seeking who's going to give him the go-ahead to pounce on you at any given moment. The Bible lets us know that she probably was weakened. And you, I don't know about you, and maybe you know somebody like this, but there are some things that can come at you that you experience for a long time. Hallelujah, and, and, and the enemy would like to keep you in a box in the dark, in the closet, 
isolated so nobody else can know what's going on. In these type of situations, there are suicidal thoughts that may come out of the situation. Come on, somebody. There are unrighteous thoughts. There are thoughts of defeat. Thoughts of lack and thoughts of rejection that's possible to come out of situations that throw you in to a place of heaviness. Relationships that could be great ones are often threatened and never get anywhere because of unexpected issues. You could have had a great relationship but because of these issues you find yourself by yourself. Issues that keep you bound. Issues, issues. Everybody's got issues. These issues, this issue will affect your joy. Oh yeah, somebody say issues. They will affect your joy. I can imagine that these issues had her bitter. She could not go outside. She could not be around other people. She could not have fruitful relationships because of this issue. I can imagine that, you know, you got to be careful about allowing issues to stir up meanness in your heart. Come on, somebody. You got to be mighty careful about allowing, uh, that you don't allow these issues to stir up envy and bitterness and and, and that will come up not only against you, but against people around you. And whereas God could be sending somebody around you to love on you and to, to protect you and to befriend you, but because of issues, you can have a fruitful relationship. Come on, somebody. I can imagine that these issues threaten her to die, threaten to be her death. At some point in time, how many of you know that issues will squeeze the very life out of you? You can't fulfill the purpose that God called you for with the issues that squeeze in you. The issues that's calling you into a place of darkness. Come on, somebody. Uh, the Bible tells us she had uh, gotten the best advice from many physicians. All the greatest advice that she could possibly get. And, and, and they made it use. She gave her prescription, I can imagine, prescription after prescription. And, and, and in my study, I found out that what they did was they had her mixing up all kinds of alums and saffrons and Persian onions and cumin, amen, and methods of herbs and plants that were mixed in wines and they drank it. They prescribed it and as long as she had something to give to them, they stuck around. Come on, so how many of you got some, you know some people, and as long as you got something to give to them, they stick around. Hallelujah, but as soon as, I don't want to go there right now, as long as she had something to give them, they kept her hopes up high. They kept her believing in it. Kept her, they kept deceiving her and making her think that they could cure her, that they could help her. Girl, call me anytime. I'm always up. You can trust me. I'm available at any time of the day. Girl, you got my number. You can call me when you get up, get ready. And if somebody is always standing by and making you think that they can help you in your desperate situation. Hallelujah. They gave her up. The Bible lets us know it's incurable. We see that there are some people and too many people that we often trust to give us what we look for and what we need. But you've got to know that they only have limited understanding and resources. And they certainly don't have the power that you need to get up from under your issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says she spent all she had going after people and places and things that had nothing left to give her. 
is dangerous, people of God. It's destructive to put your life in the hands of those whose very own lives are out of control and certainly undisciplined. It's destructive, it's dangerous, it's deadly because some of the same people that you trust can be your worst disease. Come on, somebody. You might suffer by their instructions, but you gotta be careful who you go to. You gotta be careful who you run to. You gotta be careful who you are looking for, uh, somebody, whoever you're looking for to fill your need. And so instead of being relieved by them, she was troubled by them. Right. And those who don't get better by the medicine just grow worse. Right. And instead of you controlling the situation, right. how many of you know the situation controls you? Right. And we walk around and we look for others to pat us on the back. Issue. We walk around and we expect others to give us what we think we need. And the situation gets worse. And the situation takes control. And the thing that's going on in the body of Christ and in the world today is we often look to everybody else before we look to Jesus. It's become the norm to try in vain to go to everything and everybody else before trying the one who could rescue us. The one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask, think, or even imagine. We go to everybody else instead of the one who can hide us in the secret place of his tabernacle. We go to everybody else instead of going to the one who will come to your side immediately. Somebody shout. Unfortunately, there are times when we wait too late to figure out that what you put your value into is of no value to you. Can I say that again? Sometimes we wait too late to figure out that what we put our value into is of no value to you. And it's easy to blame somebody else for our issue. It's easy to put the burden on somebody else. And these people of God are the subtle attempts of the enemy to put himself in there and back himself out the door and hide his hand and leave you holding the bag. But Jesus is a sure refuge. Come on somebody, Jesus is a sure refuge. And even and especially to those of us who make him our last refuge. Come on somebody. The Bible says and lets us know as we read these scriptures, she said, if I may touch but it's close, I shall be whole. Hallelujah. If I may touch but it's close. There are some things, people of God, that we just got to know that we know that we know. And God is looking for a people who dares to walk by faith in these last hours, regardless of the issues, regardless of the situation. The Holy Spirit that God has given us makes us sensitive enough to be able to know what situation God can give you. Stop coming to people to make you feel important. You are somebody in God. You are special in Jesus.
because she couldn't be seen. She could not publicly tell him what her issue was. She could not publicly make an announcement about what was going on in her. And the Bible lets us know. I began to look that up and I started looking up the, the when it got to about her blood was dried up. The Bible said she felt herself in herself. She felt perfectly well all over her as if she was never in the situation before. And the Bible says in an instant she got her deliverance. There are some situations that we find ourselves in at some point in life that it looks like we're never going to get deliverance. And I know nobody wants to hear this, but there were some afflictions that God has allowed just to get us to a place in Him. There's some situations, some thorns in our flesh that God wants to get us out of. That He wants to get us closer to Him. He wants to draw us closer to Him. And Christ touched her, realized that something had gone out of him. Oh, yeah. He realized somebody reached far enough to get a breakthrough. He realized somebody reached long enough. Somebody didn't give up. But somebody came out of that dark situation and touched me. Somebody came out from under the heaviness and reached out and touched me. And Jesus didn't look around and ask the question with an attitude. But how many of you know that when you touch God, it moves him? Hallelujah. He's waiting on somebody to touch him. He's waiting on somebody to pull on him. He doesn't have an attitude when you touch him. He doesn't, the, 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 the disciples that were around him had the nerve to ask him a dumb question. And Jesus had to look past that. sometimes who just can't get it. They don't see it. And Jesus is teaching us as a perfect example to be able to look past the dumb stuff. Because somebody needs deliverance. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Hebrews 12 and 6 said, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. There are some situations that you've had to deal with for a mighty long time. A mighty, mighty, mighty long time. And the Bible declares that he loves you. So he chastens you. But you got to reach out from under. You got to reach out and around the situation. God will give you a private touch. In a public And when she knew what had happened to her, 
her, she feared and was trembling. The enemy wants the people of God to remain in fear, to hold back, to keep back, to shriek back. And there are times you run into people who want you to feel bad about what God is doing good in your life. Every time I turn around, you got something critical or negative to say. Everybody's not going to be happy about your situation. But you got to know that God honors your faith in it. And if you delight yourself in the things of God, He will give you the desires of your heart. I'm closing right here. Fret not yourself because of evil doers. Fret not yourself because of player haters on the job. The Bible says they'll soon be cut down and off. One thing that I desire and that what I seek after. Because how many of you know he can't? 